you know, I was just um, watching a video on Invisible People's channel, and uh, that's owned by an individual named Mark, and he um, started that channel. I can't remember when he started, but he, you know, he would walk up to people that are going through homelessness, and he would ask them how they became homeless, and you know, it it, it really woke people up and, and, and it, you know, it helped remove a lot of stigma and ignorance from the way that people think of, of homelessness because it's not what people think, man. And uh, I seen a video of this kid <clears throat> in Ottawa. I think it was uploaded like six years ago or something like that, which there was an, an update in the title that he ended up passing away uh, from an overdose. Somebody in the comments said, you know, his he, the kid spoke about <clears throat> his family, his parents kicked him out at like 12, when he was like 12 years old, unable to figure out what's right or wrong or, or you know, and then the streets is going to influence you from there. You're not going to have a fair chance at the opportunities that are out there in the world. You're not going to know what to do with them. But people assume in just in their ignorance that, that you should be able to, um, but that's not the case in, in real life. Um, but there was a comment that somebody said, you know what, you know, his parents failed him, the system failed him, which is true. Where's CAS? You know, where's where, where's uh, um, Child Protective Services or whatever at 12 years old? You know, um, I've been through that myself, and they, they failed me as well. <clears throat> when I was going through uh, an abusive environment, they just, you know, it, it's... I'll make another video about that if you're interested to know the truth about that, because I've experienced it personally, and I can speak on it. It's not an opinion. <clears throat> but anyway, somebody wrote that in the comments, and then somebody else said, what do they say? Uh, no, he failed himself, blah, blah, blah. So you're telling me that this kid that got kicked out at 12 years old because this, you know, some guy wanted to sleep with his mom, and, and they wanted to drink and party and, and do drugs or whatever, so they kicked the kid out because he's too much of a, uh, you know, a, a burden to their lifestyle because, you know, that's what kind of happened to me, you know what I mean? So... I can see where this happens. Other people wouldn't even imagine something like that. So they play, they put they put the ignorance on the on the homeless individual, the victim, and they blame the victim and they say, oh well, he had all the same opportunities as I did, and blah blah blah. So what? I was on, you know, oh I grew up with uh, one parent in a in a family. Like people are just so privileged that they don't understand and they've never went through the trauma and the pain that comes along with that stuff uh, that affects you for the rest of your life and makes it. So you're unable to, to function, really, you know, and people don't really count that in, you know, and um, that's the issue. And, and, you know, that's what I've been talking about the, the entire time <clears throat> with what I do. It's the stigma. It's ignorance, you know, and until it happens to somebody, it'll be almost impossible for them to comprehend and be like, wow, I was wrong. You know, but th I feel like there is a way, and that's by people with lived experience telling their story, and that's what I'm doing with the Existence Project, and and you know I, you know, basically got hired to be a part of that organization to do that work and be a public speaker, and you know, um, trying to help remove some of the stigma and ignorance that's around homelessness, man. It's it's terrible, and and you know what? I don't like bullies, man. I was somebody, you know, I grew up pretty tough. I grew up in Hamilton, Still City, you know. I was the guy that punches the bullies out, bro. You know, people try to bully me, they got hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, I already lived that life in jail and crime and violence and stuff like that. And I learned from it. My dad died when I was in jail. I missed the funeral. There's this big story about it, whatever. You know, I've been through it a million times. That's why I'm saying whatever. I don't want to continue to go through it. But if it's going to educate somebody, I will. You know, um, I'm working hard to work on myself so I can move forward in my life emotionally, mentally. And I'm still scarred. I'm 28 years old, and I, and and I have moments of where out of body experiences. I you know, and and it's it's hard to describe. You know, it's it's hard to live inside of my body, um, and that's the worst thing that you could ever feel um, in your life is not being able to live in your own body, in your own reality, because you're so damaged. And I'm a tough dude. It takes a lot to hurt me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I used to be cold-hearted and had no feelings and didn't care, you know, I desensitized to, you know what I mean? But it catches up to you, uh, you know, in your mid-20s, in your late-20s, and then it'll punch you in your chest as tough as you really think you are. Anybody can get got, and anyone can get put on their ass, you know what I'm saying? So think about that. Quite resilient, man.